so dear students i welcome you for the today's lecture related to the evaporation <coughs> we are going to first discuss about the introduction of evaporators then the different types of the evaporators after that we will be moving towards the multiple effect evaporators and finally the designing steps for the evaporation process evaporators now basically the evaporators they are the process of boiling it is similar to the boiling but the processes in which the concentrated solution is of concern concentrated solution is our product in process of evaporation in process of boiling in process of crystallization the things the vapors are generated vapors go out that is there but what is concerned what is the most product product is our concern so in process of evaporation the concentrated solution is the focused in process of crystallization crystals they are focused final product is the crystal in evaporator final product is a concentrated solution and in the process of boiling the vapors they are of importance generated vapors they becomes important in the process of reboilers or the boilers so evaporation the process of boiling a liquid in order to reduce its volume that is the concentration we are increasing the concentration when we are saying the concentration so that must contain a solute solution containing the non volatile solute and the volatile solvent so in the process of evaporation concentrated solution is our concerned product so depending on the product my focus or my operation that becomes either a boiling evaporation or a crystallization however in the process of crystallization the crystals are formed and the crystalline product that is of concern the evaporation finds application in the various food pulp and paper industries then the primarily its uh, application is the fruit juice concentrations vegetable juices then your dairy products so that is the dairy products your milk powder or condensed milks then evaporation is also used to concentrate the salt and sugar then what uh, why we do evaporation one is to reduces the transportation cost of the product as the volume that is reduced the storage cost that also becomes less when we do the concentration of fruit juice One liter liquid, one liter concent uh, juice. We are re reducing its concentration to say 350 ml. That means the storage cost that is reduced. Prepare for the next unit operation that is either for the drying or for the crystallization. After evaporation, the concentrated solution that is obtained and then it is fed to the crystallizer. then reduces the deteriorative chemical reactions the liquids which get deteriorated <clears throat> with the time that those reactions are reduced 
then better microbiological stability and the recovery of the solvent that is one of the purpose of these evaporators then the driving force is the basis for uh, any heat transfer now here the temperature difference between the steam and the product temperature that will be the driving force ts is your steam temperature and t1 is your product temperature then the volatile solvent is removed from the feed so the solution containing the volatile solvent plus non volatile solute you get a higher concentrate solution examples are concentration of the milk to produce the condensed milk juices nacl naoh then ether recovery from fat extraction so these are the different applications now the basic parts of a evaporator system that is a heat exchanger a vacuum generation system vapor separator and a condenser either of the systems can be used vacuum it depends on the process if the process demands vacuum or to reduce the boiling point temperature we reduce the pressure so we apply the vacuum this is the process adjustment or the process requirement decides the number of units attached with a heat exchanger then the vapor separator you are going to separate the vapors and liquid in this vapor separator a condenser whenever the vacuum that is attached a condenser is required for the vapor separation <clears throat> to condense the vapors generally the if you draw a diagram for the evaporator it is a calendria or a short tube evaporators they are the most common and for that purpose we will understand it first what happens in the process of evaporator now here the feed that is in this is a simple shell and tube heat exchanger that is available for separation of the vapors the vapor separation room or the head room or the kettle type area kettle type shape that will be provided for the purpose of a vapor separation or you can say the disengagement section then on the shell side that means outside the tubes you are providing the steam inside the tubes you are feed that will be there and the liquid which moves in the downward direction from this central part from this central part the liquid moves in the downward direction and through the tubes it moves in the upward direction and then there is a recirculation that is taking place recirculation of a fluid that will be there now whatever the vapors they are generated the vapors will go out and will be condensed in a condenser unit in which the cooling water generally that is used to this condenser the vacuum that can be also applied if the process requirement is there if the fluid is uh, temperature sensitive then i have to reduce its boiling point 
and for that purpose we are reducing the pressure and for reducing the pressure you require the vacuum on the shell side there is a steam and which is getting condensed from the bottom that is taken out from the bottom even the product that is taken out from the bottom in case of a evaporator generally and the vapors which move in the upward or the out from the top this is the another figure for the same purpose again here also the liquid that is entering here it goes out and it gets recirculated back the product is taken out from here the condensed steam that will be going to this condensate the steam trap that can be provided here so this is the industrial scale or the labor pilot plant scale evaporator is shown in this figure the upper section in this lower section there will be the tubes that will be available this is the steam pressure gauge steam that will be supplied and whatever the vapor disengagement section is there it is here and the vapors will go out and they are attached to the condenser this is the steam line in which the steam is on the shell side and there is a condensate which is provided on the lower bottom of this shell side this is the bottom section steam trap that is provided to collect the condensate steam this is the steam trap this is the general p and id diagram then there are different types of evaporators generally the solar evaporators batch pan evaporators the natural circulation evaporators short tube or calendria evaporators they can be vertical or horizontal type then the long tube vertical rising film evaporators then the long tube vertical falling film evaporators both are coming into the category of the long tube this is the short tube or calendria then the four circulation evaporators there is a natural circulation evaporators as well as the four circulation evaporators are there then the wipe film or agitated thin film evaporators then plate evaporators basket evaporators then centrifugal oblique conical evaporators horizontal spray film evaporator by spraying the film and then finally the multiple effect evaporator systems that is available now one by one we will go into the details of these different types of the evaporators the solar evaporator this is the cheapest source solar energy is used for heating purpose generally our uh, production of sodium chloride which uh, we can observe near the sea shores mithagar then this process of uh, crystallization that is associated with this production of nacl and it is the cheapest it is open source naturally the sun energy is used and the water is getting evaporated so this is the solar evaporation system the next is a batch pan evaporators are there these are the batch pan when we say it's a small quantity of solution you have to uh, concentrate 
then we are going to use this batch pan evaporators this pans there are small vessels which are provided with a jacket either the jacket or the coils for uh, circulating this heating media that means uh, the separation is there it's a simple heat exchanger so it has to be separated a heating media and a cold fluid for the heating media you have to use either tubes jackets or coils and uh, the applications for this batch pan they are the simple jams and jellies fruit juice concentrations and pharma products but with a smaller quantities then we are using the batch operations if the production capacities are high then generally people go into the continuous production processes then there is a natural circulation evaporator so when we talk a natural circulation evaporator we have already talked related to the thermosiphon reboilers also in which the flow of the fluid is because of the density difference between the hot and cold fluid because of the temperature difference you are having a density difference so the fluid that moves on its own now whenever the fluid that is available in this uh, separation vessel it will be of a lower temperature as compared to the fluid which is available in this shell and tube heat exchanger because in the shell and tube heat exchanger we are supplying the steam so this supplied steam that increases its temperature temperature of this fluid which is moving into this separation vessel and whatever the hot fluid that will be going at the top and the cold fluid that is moving back again into the heat exchanger so once the fluid that is hot the vapors will go out and uh, whenever the evaporation that is there uh, the it takes uh, some amount of the energy from the surrounding molecules and it decreases its temperature the liquid decreases its temperature so that becomes heavy and as a result the thermosiphoning that takes place and this is uh, not only because of the temperature difference but also you have to adjust the height also the potential difference the height difference is there always uh, these uh, heat exchangers they can be either horizontal or they can be vertical as shown in this figure there can be horizontal heat exchangers also that can be provided then they can be once through or re calculating units once through that means the unit the solution is circulated once only in the unit the circulation of the fluid circulating fluid is passing only once it is not repetitive or recirculated and the second is the recirculating unit in which the recirculation takes place the number of more than two three four five times that again depends on the temperature and the amount of the concentration that is required when we say once through that means the either the fluid is uh, temperature sensitive or uh, the not much difference in the concentration that is to be achieved for that purpose it is once through solution the next is the short tube evaporators these are the most common they are our calendrias in which the feed that is entering in the tube site in the inlet is from the top sorry feed is from the top and there is a down comer which is provided this is nothing but the down comer that is there fluid moves in the downward direction and through the tubes it moves in the upward direction because of the temperature difference and the vapors generated that goes out from the top and whatever the concentrated product that will be there that is taken out from the bottom 
steam inlet that is on the shell side and the condensed steam you will get from the bottom should these are the short but wide steam chest in the form of a shell and tube heat exchanger then the steam is fed to the inside of the tubes then circulation is generally natural circulation yes there is a natural circulation in which the fluid passes through the tubes and it moves so it's a natural circulation that is also there then density difference due to the heating around the steam pipe causes the warmer fluid to rise and the colder fluid to sink so sometimes vacuum source that is also applied generally the length of these tubes is one to two meter and that is why they are called as the short tube evaporators the diameter of the tubes is 50 to 100 millimeter diameter that is generally common in case of the evaporators when we talk related to the general heat exchangers the diameter of the tubes is uh, around uh, 19 to 25 millimeter that means uh, three-fourth of the inch or one inch but in case of your uh, evaporation evaporator systems where the solids they are available and as a result to handle the large volume of the liquids solids we are using the higher diameter of the tubes so that these higher diameter tubes they will not get choked and can be easily cleaned so downcomer at the center uh, forces the circulation of the liquid to move in the downward direction so these are called the calendrias the short tube evaporators they are also called as the calendria then uh, there are certain advantages that is the fouling fluids can be handled as the tube diameter is of 50 millimeter then cleaning is easy higher heat transfer coefficients then good for non-corrosive clear and non-crystalline liquids but there is a disadvantage that it cannot be used for the heat sensitive material why heat sensitive material because it is being recirculated again and again if the heat sensitive materials are there that should be preferable for one pass or two pass circulation should be there only those materials which are not the heat sensitive they can be recirculated again and again to get the higher concentrated solutions then there is a long tube vertical rising film evaporators the tube in these cases are long one and the steam providing the heat transfer is from outside of the tubes therefore steam that is from the outside of the tubes that the outside it is condensed and the long tube vertical rising film when the film is rising that means the field should be at the bottom film is rising there the film uh, there the feed is at the bottom feed bottom mein hai to hi liquid upar jayega and that is why it is a rising film because of the density difference steam upar se aa rahi hai again it's a counter current uh, flow is there steam coming from the top the feed is from the bottom the higher temperature steam is in the upper section upper ke section mein temperature steam ka jyada hai as compared to this lower section so the fluid which is there the feed which is there it increases gradually in temperature and as the temperature increases from bottom to the top the density difference also exists and as a result the vapor generated that moves in the upward direction and goes out into the liquid vapor separator this is the vapors and this is your uh, product that can be there the vaporizing bubbles of the steam causes the film to concentrate to rise upwards inside the tube then the vapor and concentrate are separated into the liquid vapor separator chamber
So these are the rising film evaporators in which the field that is there at the bottom, steam on the shell side inlet, steam condensate and the vapor separator is there. This is a single unit consisting of a heat exchanger and a vapor separator. However, uh, this unit, the heat exchanger and liquid vapor separator, they are separate. Then there is a falling film evaporator. Falling film, that means the fluid moves or the fluid entry is from the top. And that is why we call it a falling film evaporator. Feed is from the top. And with the help of a gravity, the fluid flows in a downward direction. The steam condensing on the outside of the tubes causes the evaporation of the thin film of the product flowing down the inside of the tubes. The product and the steam exit the bottom of the tubes together. So it's a co-current flow that is observed. Co-current flow, inlet and inlet, they are nearly close. And in case of a rising film, they are in a counter current. In a falling film, they are in a co-current. The next is the four circulation evaporators. The fluid is pumped from the main evaporator chamber through an external steam chest. Then the vapor liquid separation occurs in the main chamber. Dilute field is added to the recirculation loop. In this case, the pump that is used for the fluid movement the from a separator the pump takes the fluid and sends it to a heat exchanger where the temperature that is increased and again sent back to a liquid separator so whenever there is the pump that is used it becomes a force circulation and if the pump is not used then it becomes a natural circulation then this four circulation evaporators also can be in a vertical direction or they can be in a horizontal direction also then the white film or agitated thin film evaporators they are generally used wiping is there or the film film formation in case of a viscous food products uh, it is difficult to evaporate uh, efficiently using uh, these simple evaporators so the products such as the thick fruit or the vegetable purees or even highly concentrated sugar syrups can be effectively concentrated in this uh, white film or agitated thin film evaporators. A thin film that is uh, formed in these cases and it is being continuously wiped out with a certain rotating blades. That means the hot surface that is available, on that hot surface the thin film will be formed and once the film that formed the blades will be used to wipe that. Because of the higher viscosity, it is uh, very difficult to remove the water from uh, uh, these viscous fluids. So, used for viscous and thermally sensitive medias. Then the plate evaporators. A series of metal plate and frame that is used in case of your plate evaporators. Evaporation can take place within the plates and frame system or evaporation can be suppressed by maintaining the sufficient pressure and allowing evaporation to occur as the heated product 
flashes into a lower pressure chamber. That means whenever uh, the liquid separators are there, the liquid and uh, uh, vapors will go out and liquid will be there. The flashing that will take place. Flashing that means a high pressure fluid that will enter into a low pressure vessel. What will happen? The vapors will be vapors and liquids they will be separated immediately if there is a sufficient pressure difference that is there. Then this is the plate frame evaporator system. 